We're back with our boys. Anyone want to tell me where we last left off? Uh, all the cruisers are about to shoot me. Because uh, it's a fancy flying by Bartarak. Right, but what and I'm about to fall, right? in, fall in a cliff. Hole. Yeah, there we go. So I think it's called a canyon. In case canyon. you're wondering, a cliff hole. It's, it's not a usually cliff. called a canyon, yes. Cliffs sound a lot more better than canyons. No, cliff hole. Cliff, cliff hole. hole. I like that. Yes. Uh, for those of you in Florida, <laughs> those are called sinkholes. Um, all right, so here's the thing. Oh, that's horrible. You see his knuckles turn white, and he just goes and pushes forward, and the chicken walker's like, tush, tush, tush. you know, I thought about, I thought about rolling this, but I think I'm gonna have Dam Jam roll this. Dam Jam, <laughs> two green, one yellow, one setback or no setback, two green, one yellow, a boost die because of the speed boost. So two green, one yellow, one blue, and four purple. Okay. Right. And if you want to spend a light side for Kyle, by all means. <laughs> this sounds pretty important. Oh, that that means all of our light side is gone. Thank you. Ah, it's nothing. Don't sweat it. All right. We're going to use it, baby. There you go. So mark an upgrade on that. So two green, one yellow, yep. one blue, and upgrade against four purple. <laughs> hey so he doesn't fail and he doesn't succeed i wonder what that would be i got it he the the chicken walker jumps and here you can see that all you see is the sky because the thing points upward its legs leave the ground and clear the canyon and the advantages are that he lands safely on the other side but the lack of success means that that was just a pillar of rock that was inside the canyon. Apparently, this is where it splits into a Y, and now you guys are on this isolated little island in the middle of the canyon. And it comes to a halt right before he slides off the other side. And as he does so, the visor kind of looks down, and you see probably 120 feet below is the floor of the canyon. He just exhales. Oh, shit, is that close enough for you? And he looks over at you. So perhaps we, sh we should try to get to the other side or out of here before we fall to our doom. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and let off one more shot? And then he uh, jumps up trying to grab the hatch. Okay, yeah, so I'll aim the missiles at the yacht. The yacht is now starting to level out, but it is about to fly right over the walker. <laughs> Perfect, so maybe it's easier to hit. Yeah, so it's only one difficulty to hit it and one setback because of his shields. Okay, um, and I have the two blue that I was holding from last time for... Um, Absolutely. ...from Vitar. Yeah. Absolutely. ...assistance. Uh-huh. Because of his deft maneuvering and firing and all of that. Oh, shoot. Mm, looks no, like you it's didn't. Gonna be, it looks like it's going to be one red, actually. Okay. Sorry, bro. That's fair. We need we need the light side. That's straight. All right, here we go. Don't be optimistic. May my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really optimistic, baby. That was Paul. That was just words, dog. That was a deception check. All right. So one... <laughs> all right. So you f you fail in making any damage, uh... but maybe maybe the uh... okay. I have an idea for the advantages. Um, the f luxury yacht after you hit it and fail, is having a hard time pulling up, so it is really close to the ATS. Close enough to jump onto, or use a grappling hook onto, perhaps. Let, let us get at the fuck I'm out of this I'm not gonna ATS. say it, but... I'm gonna say it. I'm going. That's, that's what so, we do. Kyle, irritated, goes, ah! and holds his hand up, and you just see the hatch go, Poof! and open up. And he looks up and he sees the ship right above him and he goes, holy shit. And he's like taking cover into the corner. What do you do here? And I, I kind of like when um, me and or Grodd and I um, infiltrated the shuttle on our doomed plummet to the, the planet of Kessel. Right. Uh, I'm just going to stand <laughs> in the opening, point the grappling hook up and say, um, 
for the order for the Jedi, and I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna shoot it up and just try to hope so, for the best. So you're not pulling the Luke and Leia where you grab Kyle in your arms and he gives you a kiss on the lips and tells you don't don't fuck up. You're not gonna do well, does that. He, like, does he have a a utility belt of his own with gear and crap on it? Do you want to take the time to look? Yeah, he yelled at me about leaving him behind. I do want to check. I need to check. Yeah, you look. He doesn't. He's got a holster. Shit. Well, then I'll I'll grab him. I'll yeah. Grab so him. you're like you're like come here, and and he goes over and latches onto you, and he looks up. He goes, "You realize that if you miss, or if you hit the wrong part, well, it was nice knowing you." And he turns yes. his lights. He turns his lightsaber on and looks upward. I need you to roll me an athletics check, and this athletics check is going to be three purple because you're hitting a fast-moving target while carrying somebody. And I'm actually going to give you a setback die for Kyle hanging off the side. Okay. Now I'm definitely going to use a light side. That's for sure. Okay. So, sorry, dudes, but we have to get out of here. So I feel like this is an important. I don't think they mind. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. And athletics. Hey, it's all about the product. Really, players? Oh, shit. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I don't think we. You go. <laughs> tink, and you and Kyle fly out the ATST. And then the grappling hook, just because the speed of the yacht goes. <laughs> and you just see the like line snap. And you're like, oh, oh, ah. And you and Kyle, uh, the advantage is, is that you don't get hurt. I'll say that. I'll take that away from you. But you So we land, land on, on the island? You then. land on the other side. No, it launches you to the other side of the canyon. So you land on your chest, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Kyle lands next to you. His lightsaber skitters in front of him, turns off, and goes... And then that's when you see a black boot step on it to stop it from sliding away. Kind of look up, and then we're going to cut back over to Dam Jam and Grod with a side wipe. The side wipe, Dam Jam and Grod, shows you guys in the dark, sitting there. You feel the G forces and the change of the gravity. In fact, some of the boxes are bouncing around. One of them hits um, Grod's leg and opens, and you hear kating 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 kating. And I'm gonna say, what was that? I'm gonna start feeling around. Yeah, you feel around. You find a bunch of objects. There's one that's shaped like a, a big cylinder. Do you, do you have a glow rod or anything? He's got no, nothing. I, he was in prison. Yeah. Oh, okay. And and Dam Jam will think for a moment, and he'll pull out his holocron and and focus on it to see if it'll light up. Yeah, you focus on it. It lights up the entire room. Lights up blue. Um, and you're just kind of looking at it. Um, you don't have the ability to use it like the others have to where they can pinpoint right. locations, but you're starting to understand that it, it's got a purpose. And as you're looking into it, uh, Grodd, the light turns on and you realize your, the thing that hit your leg was a tool chest and a bunch of tools came out, but one of them's a camper's lamp. So like mechanics can twist it to turn it on and hang it from a pipe and do some work inside a dark location of a ship. So yeah, I immediately do that like twist it on and look for a hook to hang it on um yeah there's a hook right above you like a pipe that you can hook it to yeah um, i immediately and, and it yeah. clamps on so i immediately clamp it on and everything and then i, I turned to damn jam was like we need to do so i can't just sit in here we got to do something and you lit it up right like the yeah, now everything's there's a bright white light around you guys, but the holocron, even though it's got a softer glow, its light reaches out further. So it's blue light across most of the bottom of the ship, and then really bright white light in a close proximity. Okay, he'll he Dim Jim's gonna look around to see if there's any anything they could possibly do. Um, yeah, roll perception. All right, difficulty. The difficulty is going to be one. Okay. Okay, that's better. <laughs> oh, now you've been a success. <laughs> you've been in here before, Damn Jam. So you kind of know what's already in here. 
But I think the threat is that the only thing that you can see that you guys can do is there's a big metal pole in the middle of the platform that lowers with a green button on it. Um, Damn Jam will look at the green button and go, what's this? And he'll push it. Okay, so yeah, you step onto the loading dock and you're like, what's this? You go, beep, and then all of a sudden the bottom of the ship goes, and wind hits Damn Jam like, as the Starfighter's flying. Meanwhile, in Viatar's cockpit, there's like a little warning that there's a door that's open. Um, and Damn Jam, you and Grodd start to lower. And you realize that... Uh, Bartorok is matching the speed of the luxury yacht and flying right above it. And as you guys are lowering, you're looking down the open top of the luxury yacht. You see peoples in the band are looking up at you. And um, they only have a small little shimmer of something protecting them, assuming shields. Um, and then there's a bunch of people on the luxury yacht with rifles looking up at you like, what the heck? And I still got my <laughs> rifle on me, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take a shot down there. Are they playing oh. that stupid song? Yeah, the band is like. Right, yeah, Grad's gonna shoot at the band. <laughs> Grad, can you make a? Shoot's triggering the shit out of Grad. Can you make man. a ranged heavy with two difficulty and a setback die? <laughs> oh, you... I'd love to. One difficulty, right? Let your Two anger difficulty, fuel you. One threat. Okay. Jam, jam two or just two difficulty? Um, same with you. One threat. Okay. If you're I just shooting a, an, are you shooting a guy with a rifle? Jam, jam. Uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm shooting to that direction. Yeah. All right. So. You fire your you fire your bowcaster, and it goes past the guy. It misses, but I think the threat is is that it does hit some of the sound equipment, and all of a sudden the music gets louder. <laughs> Holy shit! D what is the triumph? Hell yeah! What could the triumph the be? You definitely hit the guy you're aiming at, Grod. Wait, I wipe out the whole twice? band. Because the, the, I did, I had melee selected for the bowcaster instead of ranged heavy. Oh, so you don't miss. Instead, it's like you hit part of the equipment and it goes, and everybody in the band's like, and they all plop down dead. And again, I say, I always hated that song. I always hated that song. <laughs> you say over your shoulder to Damn Jam. Okay, so that was the reason why there was a reroll, folks, on YouTube is because he accidentally rolled his melee skill instead of his ranged heavy, which definitely changes the entire roll altogether. Damn jam! You see a guy with a rifle freak out because a uh, blaster bolt came down and nuked the band. He holds it up and starts aiming it at you. Okay, I'm shooting. Go for it. I, I couldn't find my weapon, so... Oh my god, you hit this guy and he just goes... Kwah! And you see his wound kind of melt away a little bit. So, like, his insides show where he's been shot and he's crying on the deck of the ship. Um, what would you like to do with the advantage? Um. Now, it, this is the opening area is near where Grodo is, right? You don't know. You don't oh, see I don't Grodo. Know. Okay. It just looks like uh, the top. It looks like an observation deck. On a cruise okay. liner. I'm gonna say that with the sh all of a sudden there's shots being fired into the luxury lot yacht itself. They're gonna um, try to divert to uh, clear their sh our shooting range. Um, I don't know if that would be an advantage for you. I think that would make it harder for you. Because if okay. they divert it away, you'll lose your advantageous firing. I just want to help you out. I don't want you to spend your advantage on something that could hurt you. I hurt you, yeah. Um. Shoot. I'm going to pass on to boost to... The next person? Next person who rolls, yeah. Which is Viatar. Viatar, you realize uh, the gun has no view of the ship now. Because it's only on the top. 
However, right. you do have a lovely console display in front of you that's got missile targeting information and a rear-mounted um, uh, single blaster. Right. So he, he's like, he, he goes over there and he's like, okay, missiles. But some of the missiles, like, and he actually burts, uh, reverts the, uh, the missile targeting to, the, to one of the cruisers in the back. Okay, so yeah, I, I could see that. Maybe off to your left, there's a dreadnought that's trying to get into what I call the cannon swipe. They're gonna sideswipe you and just right. unleash everything on you. So yeah, why don't you roll? But the difficulty is gonna be three purple instead of one because you're targeting a ship further away. Where are we gonna yeah. do boosts? Two boosts. Yep. Or is that just a single? I just um, passed it on to the next he guy, passed it on to so. two boosts to the next guy. Yeah, he didn't specify oh. a specific person. Okay. All right, two boosts, three purple, gunnery. Yeah, baby. It. All Light right. That uh, up. So even though these missiles aren't really anti-capital ship weapons, they're more um, anti-fighters. You fire oh. them, and it manages to just decimate one of the turrets so the turret just goes boom and there's a big hole in the ship and some of the gunnery crews on board the dreadnought are like <sighs> and their skins flapping around um they begin retreating yeah, and locking the um the thing look like the the pit bulls with their shaking their face back and yeah forth. yeah they're and like the they're like <laughs> so they start retreating and they they start locking off that turbo laser um, meanwhile, inside the yacht, Grobo gets a comm, and he turns it on, and he's like, Grrr! And, uh, it shows a Klaatuinian going, Those bastards blew a part of my ship! I want blood! And Grobo's like, Good old you know what? And then the subtitles we see, Hold your fire! Don't shoot! And the Klaatuinian's like, Grrr! And punches his console, and the comm's cut out. Meanwhile, here, you're laying on your face, Kyle's lightsaber is being stepped on, and you look up to see a soldier in a weird dark red and black camo, almost like urban camo pattern, but red and black coloring, and he's wearing a beret with corsex insignia right in the middle of the beret, and he's like, now, now, don't make any hasty moves, and you start to realize that there are three other soldiers hiding in the rocks nearby with their guns drawn on you. So I'll very slowly and deliberately and cautiously begin to stand. And I'll say, um, <clears throat> very well, let us end this amicably. Kyle's looking at you like, And I'll really? start judging them. Kyle stands up and he goes, huh, oh, boys. And he starts dusting himself off. And he's like, I'm glad you're here. The New Republic appreciates your assistance. And they look over and they go, hmm, Mr. Katarn. They hold their rifles up. Yes, we got your message that your uh, your ship was on here, that distress signal. We came as soon as we heard. Like, well, you definitely got here sooner than I did. We were nearby. Excellent. Well, we could really use a lift off this rock back up to the rubble ships in orbit. They smile, and they're like, of course. Come with us. So, did your entire party make it? And they stand up and they begin escorting here and Kyle and they hand Kyle back his lightsaber. He says, yep, every single one of the crew of the Star's End made it except for the droids. Oh, pity. And then he looks over to his guys over his shoulder and nods and one of them kind of like goes to his uh, wrist computer. A little hologram of Dam Jam's face shows up and he's sending a message out. And then puts his hand away, and they're like, Our ship's hidden in the next canyon right over. We saw yours landing a few moments ago. Come. And you guys are starting to get led down the canyon. Kyle feels he owes an explanation. Here. When your ship's distress signal went on, I notified Paradise immediately, and... He was worried about you, so he wanted us to look into it. He'll owe the New Republic a favor, but really you can't blame Cooper for that. So, luckily, the boys at Corsac agreed that this was a threat to the New Republic. And they needed to get involved in this Kessel fight. And then the guy with the bray smiles and goes, It was our honor, really. 
It is our job to make sure that we foster a healthy relationship with the New Republic and the Corsac Industries. And I'm going to look at um, look at Kyle and um, I'm going to very casually put my hand on my lightsaber and I'm going to say, um, yes, in the name of trade, many things can be done. Mostly in the name of security. It's our job to make sure that all items, persons of interest that are a threat to our society are put down. That includes this Kessel riot. We'll deal with them shortly enough. Do you have any information on the prison? Yes, there's a fine dressed man apparently in charge over there. Now I think I may have injured a few of the prisoners. They're, They're eating excellent. people. What? They kind of stop. Kyle's yes. like, wait, what? And he grabs your arm to turn you around towards them. And I kind of spit on the ground in disgust. I'm like, Psh. yes, what they were people? eating the Imperial officers. Serving goes, them to the other prisoners. Persex like, <laughs> irony, and just continues walking. But Kyle looks horrified. They thought I was an Imperial officer. I continue along <laughs> as I say that. I'm like, yeah, they... Kyle looks at you and goes, how did they think you were an Imperial officer? Oh, I had taken a uniform in an attempt to beguile my way off the ship, off the, beguile my way onto a ship and off the planet. And then I mistakenly approached the prison, still wearing it. <laughs> um, it slipped my mind and they took, mistook me for an Imperial officer. Kyle's Perhaps my parsec is, uh, out of hearing range for this. And he's like, oh my God. And just kind of draws his hand over his face. He's like, well, this is important because if we do this for Cooper, he's going to grant us the trade contract I, I needed to reach him for. I, I bite my tongue because I need Kyle right now. But um, all I can muster for him is just like, um, I'm glad that some good will come of this. Um, yeah, there's a lot more I want to say, baby. Yeah, he nods and says we always have to focus on the pos the positives like when she died and he goes quiet and I mean do you mean Sarah uh no and then he kind of picks up his pace to catch up with the corset guys I won't I won't press him I'll catch up. Well, I'll just follow along. I'm glad to be behind them where I can keep my eye on them because I don't trust them. I feel like they're definitely going to try to kill me since they said they were so kind of working for Cooper. Yeah, you get to the uh, edge of the canyon and you look down and uh, you see several ships, probably about 30, covered in this weird red camo netting. And there's a bunch of soldiers moving around. Are these like all fighters or is there like a mix of types of ships? Um, they mostly look like freighters, like armed freighters. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, well, damn. Um, and there's I'm, enough I'm guys kinda... here to assume that probably 10 or 12 of them came per ship. So 300 dudes? Yeah. Fuck me. Okay, well, I'm definitely um, just following Kyle's lead because he's the one who... Oh, they recognized him and shit. I... I'm going to let him do the talking here because I don't want to get myself in trouble. I think I think as as they converse, as you get led into the camp and you see all the rifles and, and that they've been here, they've obviously been here a while because there's trash bags. Um, you know, you start hearing them asking Kyle questions and they mention that when you radioed us a couple weeks ago, we didn't know what to expect. This is worse than we thought. And uh, he kind of nods his head. And they said, we've already lost an agent as it is. And he goes, anyone I would know? They nod yes, and they're like, Valeria. He had some interesting information on your crew, by the way. Speaking of which, here, can we ask you some questions about the prison? I'll, I'll, I'll step forward and I'll, um, I'll say yes, of course, but, and I'll look at Kyle then and I'll say, perhaps Bodorak and my friends need our help. Should we attend to that first? Your friends. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake, but I mean... No, no, he says your my, friends? That's my He's concern. asking you a question. Kyle? Kyle asked me that no, or the, the, the officers? the Corsac guy. 
yeah, um, well, uh, at this You're point, talking I about can't the help crow, but... right? Y yes, I'll, I'll kind of yeah. take that. We were going to help him to not crow. mention my dog. And then he yes, goes, good, "How many good. of you made it? Your ship crashed." And I'll say, "I've seen, I've seen three of my, two of my friends, okay, so the majority you... of the crew." Who was it? Was it a uh, Grod? Because I have a feeling. Yes, I. And was it Viatar? I haven't seen him personally, but he's said to be all right. Ah, uh, so it was Dam Jam and Grod. Yes, I've seen Dam Jam. He's he was doing well. Well, um, good to hear. We're really concerned for uh, your group. You're very important to Cooper. He paid us a lot of money. Yes, I can't wait to see him again and i want to uh, at this point i'm gonna use sense on the guy and and see if i can tell um if okay, he's so explain what, to what his feelings audience. are yeah exactly it's a if, okay go ahead i'm gonna reach so i, I um i reach into his mind um as i because there was that long pause and that was when i i began and um i reach into his mind you know and I, i'm just trying to get a feel for what his emotional state is when he's talking about cooper and like us you what Cooper wants him that? to do with this. Um, yeah, I need to roll a force power and just see if I can activate it or see how what it takes to activate it. So what did that come up as? Dark. Oh, shit. I mean, I'll take the conflict. I'll call it scale. I'll talk, call it that I'm afraid. Because, um, I mean, there's 300 dudes here that presumably want me dead under order of Cooper. And, like, I could have just led them to my my friends so I'm, yeah, I'm scared all of a sudden he's got this feeling of elation but you can tell he's trying to keep it down okay well that could be good or bad but i'll i'll take note that um he's more eager to find me and my homies than he's letting on yeah uh he motions to a room he's like if you'll sit in there i'll be right with you kyle if you'll follow me and then uh, him and Kyle turn off and go further into the camp, and before you is the room. Yeah, I'll find a quiet place and begin to begin to meditate and just try to recover whatever strain I can. And I'll think on, I'll think, try to reach out to to Dam Jam as I focus on this lightsaber that he gave me, and just try to hope that he's okay and hope that he, him, and Grodd and and Vitar can can find the way to to safety. All right, force. you know what? Why don't why don't you and Dam Jam roll? a force die and i'm gonna say i want you guys to get two light side between the two of you well un unorthodox but i think this fits that's cool come on baby there I we got go. you dog i got you oh i got you okay brother. all i needed was the two light side so you start focusing on um damn jam and it's like that moment when luke goes leia leia and she hears it that's exactly what it is. You're like, damn. You sit down. You've got the lightsaber in your hands. You're like, damn, jam, my friend. And it's almost like you're not trying to contact her. You're just thinking his his name. And damn, jam, you hear hear his voice, and it's like, damn, jam, my friend. Damn, jam. Now we're still flying, right? Yeah. You're you're standing <laughs> right. there on the platform shooting people. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he hears her voice. And he's like, her? You copy her. You don't hear anything. He doesn't have a comms unit because he was right. a prisoner. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's like, okay. And he's still just... Now here, this is very important. You feel a connection with Dam Jam. Dam Jam feels a connection with you. What's the next thing you say? Um, I say, you're in danger. There's an army of men here for you. Not just the ships you're fighting. Don't come to where I am. You immediately get the sense Stay of away. where he's located. And he's basically Do saying, don't, si don't come for me. I know. And, and he'll turn to Grodd and he goes, I know where, where her is. How the hell could you know where her is? I, I don't even I, know where her is. I, I can't explain it, but and he's gonna think for a moment. 
he realizes the pickle they're in now, but do I sense all the Corsac people from her? No. Okay. I just sense that he's one. Just like when Leia sensed that impending doom, I will Uh say you do have a sense of impending doom for here. Like, something bad is about to happen to him. Okay. He'll sit there and something bad's going to happen to her. And he'll go, Vitar, you copy? Ah. Vitar does his thing with the... Oh, yeah, yeah. This Vitar, what's up? Yeah, tell Botarak or whoever's piling. Are you piling or is it Botarak? Uh, the Wookiee's got the controls. All right, tell Botarak to go to this place and he'll describe where he pretty much yeah. feels where her's at. Yeah. Fly over there. Let's get away from these guys. Um, Botarak's uh, not going to be able to hear that uh, from Dam Jam directly, Vitar. So, how do you word it to him? Uh, uh, how's in danger? We, we need to uh, fly to his coordinates. Uh, oh, my. <clears throat> so you give him the coordinates? <laughs> you had to say Kyle, man. He's going to fly right over there. <laughs> Funny thing about life debts. <laughs> <laughs> the Moldy Crow lifts away from the deck of the luxury yacht. And starts to fly off, and that's when the Klaatuinian Dreadnought Captain's like, Yes, yes, yes! Now, now, now! And you guys are still... You notice it changes, so he's obviously listened to you, Damn Jam. You guys are leaving the luxury yacht. And, uh... Yeah, something, something interesting occurs. So, uh... Do you think I have another opportunity to block target before we get out of range? Well, now that the way that he, um, Broderock's pulling away, there's no ship in front of you, so you can't use the missiles, but you can use the turret again. If you want to shoot that dreadnought. Yeah, we'll, I'll put two more holes in it. All right, so as you're getting, as you spin the turret around and you can kind of see on a display in your cockpit, uh, which way it's facing, you notice Uh that the lights from the dreadnought, one of the turbo lasers is lighting up orange and fires at you. Hitting the ship, but taking massive setback. All right. Um, So, yeah, the ship rocks violently. One of the engines starts to smoke out the back, and Barta rocks like... And gets down uh, lower so that he's harder to hit. But you see warning lights flaring up all over the cockpit. Viatar, you're going to fire your little turret at the Dreadnought? Little teeny. Yeah, I'll, I'll even take it so much as to uh, fire on the. Uh, I'll take the setback to fire on the turret itself. To fire what? I'm sorry, you were cutting out a little bit. I want to take. I want to use my guns to fire on the, the auto cannon that just fired on us. Oh, okay. Yeah, even go ahead. Can... Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do that. Take a setback. Difficulty's too purple because your range. Right. Come on, would give me bro- all your successes. Oh, try a- <laughs> Hang on, hang on. Try that again. That was dumb. <laughs> Out of control. Would Where Grad and uh, would Grad and uh, Dam Jam? Would Grad and Dam Jam get a couple shots as we're pulling away? Yes, I was going to give you guys a chance to shoot. If you want, you could even jump down. You you have like one last chance for you guys to jump down without taking too much damage. So, Viatar, you definitely hit that turret, um, but because of the armor, it doesn't do much damage. It just kind of leaves some scoring. Maybe the guy, like, shakes out of his seat. Meanwhile, the other Klaatuinians are like... You're you're cutting out like crazy. I think it's network issues. Uh, Could you just repeat one more time? 
one second. Let me double check, make sure. Okay. No, I figured because of the threat from its their last roll, that by shooting at them, I would exacerbate whatever. I like that idea, but I, I have an idea for their threat that I think you're going to like. Okay, I'm 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 sitting back here waiting. <laughs> all right, sounds good. But all right, that so all you have is an anti freighter, anti fighter turret, and you're basically trying to attack a capital ship. So there's not a whole lot right. you're going to be able to do except tickle its fancy. But Grod and Dam Jam, the ship's right. starting to pull away. You do have a chance to jump on top of that yacht. And as it starts to pull away, Grad's going to turn to Dam Jam and is like, do we take the fight to him or do we go after here? here? Here, you can know, have input. Take... You guys want to talk about this out of character? Or do you want to roll with this? I, I, I'm going to stay in character, man. I, All right, I'm, good. I'm good. All right, yeah, I'll so let go these ahead, dudes Jam. make their decisions. <laughs> Jam Jam will look at Grod and go, I'll take your lead, buddy. Grod, uh, that's basically his dick way of saying you choose. It's all <laughs> on you, dog. <laughs> this is what you get for sticking the option of saving your friend on here. I know. And uh, he's going to think about it for a second. And uh, as much as he wants to really get after Grabo there, he's going to think that, you know, he's got a whole ship full of you know, his guys on there. Chances of them getting to him is, is not going to be very good. Damn, Jam, why don't say, you... Um, he's going to... Hold on one moment. Continue that. Damn, Jam, really quick, why don't you just make, like, a an intellect check or, or any kind of check like that? Go he's ahead, gonna, Grod. He's going to look to Damn, Jam. He's going to say, do you really know where he is? Okay. Um, intellect. Um, just the basic knowledge or... Yeah, some some check you could do. Uh, well, no, I'm thinking more like insight, like uh, maybe perception. Shit. Okay, what's the difficulty? You don't have to do perception, just a skill like that. Yeah, hold on. Shh, shh, go, buddy. Um, let's see. Because, yeah, it would be just perception would be the only thing I would think of as far as that's concerned. Okay. Even though it's shitty, but okay. <laughs> What's the difficulty? Um, Grod, what is your presence? Uh, what do I got for presence? Two. Two. So basically what you're doing is, Grod, you are, are very terrible at, at hiding your emotion. Pretty easy okay. to read. So roll that at two. Okay, so here's the threat of the situation. The threat of the situation is Grod is not in a position to make this decision, but you can tell, maybe you could tell part of him's already made the decision of what he wants to do. As he asks you again, are you sure you know where he is? Yes, I'm sure I know where he is. I'm also going to say that the threat is you taking a strain, realizing that if you go with them to save here, you're pretty much going to be trading here's life for your own. Now, Damn Jam, is it only Vitar that knows about your situation with Corsac? Yes. Okay. Well, poop. Um, and at this point, nobody's mentioned anything about Corsac to Vitar, right? No. Okay. Yeah. Any of us on the ship, right? No, not really. Well, I, even even Grod doesn't know. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let, let me get a little player, or yeah, let me get a little player knowledge right now. Whose fucking problem is this again? I thought it was Damn Jam's problem. Is that not even the case? No, no. You got like three different problems being resolved here. Oh, yeah. the Corsac problem. Yeah, yeah. Corsac apparently is is there for two people. 
Oh, okay, okay. Because I was like, I thought they were just after Danja, and they have to both of y'all are just one. Okay. No, no just wait, wait, Grod, the, the dilemma is because Grod wants to jump on there and kick Grovo's ass. This is Grod's chance to end it for Grod. Am I correct, Grod? Yeah. Yeah, but if he does, then here, or, you know, may not make it out of there alive. Grod don't know that here told y'all to do that, though. Like I no. told, yeah. I told them yeah. to go away. Like, don't come here. He's yeah. like, we gotta go there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. The true dog, man. That's the true dog. Is I'm gonna save you no matter what, motherfucker. So, so we're at an impasse. Basically, yeah. what, I think what Grod's trying to decide is: is Dam Jam and Grod gonna go jump on the uh, luxury yacht while the enraged Bartarok and Viatar go save here, or is Grod gonna miss out on his chance of a lifetime and go save uh, here? Making it easier. I to think it's as he asked uh, Dam Jam there, and, and Jam Dam Jam says, "Yeah, I know where he is." But Dam Jam also, he, he, I don't know, he, he maybe take like he takes like a second too long to answer him, and then uh, Rod just gets pissed and he says, "Ah!" and he throws his bolt caster back into the storage thing, and uh, hits the button to to. Bring the storage, the platform back up. It says, let's go get here. Yeah, so damn jam, before you can even respond to the thing, you see he's pissed. Like, he fucking hucks that bowcaster. And he just... And then the thing's like... As the ship begins to tear away. And uh, the threat from the... Um, now, if this were a choose-your-own-adventure, this is, this would be the flip to this page to find out the consequences of your reaction. <laughs> the Dreadnought, enraged, he starts screaming at his men to bank right and follow the fighter, bank right and follow the fighter. The luxury yacht goes, oh shit, the canyon floor, and starts to pull up. And as the fighter squeezes through, the Dreadnought turns right in front of the luxury yacht, and the luxury yacht goes, ah, and it has to go right down um, towards the canyon. So the the dreadnought at last minute has to veer away as his men are panicking because they almost crashed into the luxury yacht and into an ATST. <laughs> okay, like, yeah, I, I, I think, I, no, I like that. I think the luxury yacht veers off course, goes closer to the canyon, and this abandoned ATST is just like, Dum! and like a front <laughs> section of the luxury yacht is completely crumpled in. Um, as its shields flare up and it's heading straight for the uh, landing bay, which is the the part with the double doors that the Grand was killed at. So yeah, that they, they veer off, but the Dreadnought is still hot on pursuit. You guys are flying in the canyon. Um, it's not nearby per se because of uh, how the far the Chicken Walker was from the luxury yacht. Uh, but it doesn't take very long to get there. So distance-wise, you know, walking would take a long time, but the fighter has no problem getting there. Bartorok lands nearby, not directly in in the range of... Uh... Oh, actually, you know what? I should do something for Bartorok. All right, there we go. But he's enraged, so I'm going to give him a setback. And unfortunately... I don't risk this, moves. man. He's he going to use a light side. Do we have one? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Okay, we good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, okay. He said it. Caught. So he's well, narrowing well, his well, eyes and he turns on a spotlight and he's kind of scanning the surface. Then he turns the spotlight off when he realizes there's camo tents in this one canyon. And he just goes. <sighs> and the moldy crow kicks back and lands. And then he punches his console and opens the lid and hops out. Viatar, you guys are on solid ground. He, uh, I hit the, the the switch to open the the storage container. <laughs> I'm doing my best. That's funny. <laughs> so you guys go, <laughs> and then before Grod can go grab the, or as he gets up to go grab the bowcaster, it goes, <laughs> pulling Dam Jam down again as, as the ship has landed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big yo-yo. Anyway, he Vitar's trying to climb his way out of, of the of the cockpit. 
Yeah, you pop uh, the cockpit open and the ladder extends and then you can climb down. Um, okay, the Wookiee... So as he's, as he, yeah, he's probably miles ahead of him already. Yeah, the Wookiee's storming back to the storage container and looks up at Karad and goes, Ugh! motions for the bowcaster. <laughs> Grab it, throw it to him. Yeah, Vietar, you, you but, struggle a little bit coming down the ladder, but that's just because your servos are still a little dinged up, but you get down no problem. Yeah, but I, I kind of... So, I, I'd, I'd like to make a, a knowledge check in regards to the camo to see if, if, it, if it's anything that I've been familiar with. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to make a knowledge check. Once he points it out, you just see camp uh this little like camo netting that is the same color as a canyon right but if i have it related to anything from my it's, past that's, no, that's it's it's you've seen it plenty of times before it's just camo netting but it's not i'm not associating it with any particular group or no it's colored like the canyon floor that that's right. its only coloration uh, there's no there's no flag there's no symbol Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so I get done. I'm like, um, so we were in, wow, from one canyon into the next. The Wookiee just growls at you and starts walking <laughs> down the canyon. Yeah, I'm like, damn, damn. Does this look familiar? Uh, he he's like motions his hand over top of the like in the area where the the camo netting and everything is. Damn, Jim, but like no, but I know hers here somewhere. Yeah, and as you start thinking about here, here you're in this interrogation room, and they're like, "So, how many guards do you think the prison has? We just want to know so we can make a quick strike team." I was not in the main facility long enough to tell you that, but based on the force that they sent out the back to chase whoever they thought was out there, us maybe not more than a few dozen. How did you escape? By the good graces of uh, friends inside. Their names? I don't know. An Athorian. Hmm. Damn Jam wasn't there? No. Where is Dam Jam? Hopefully safe, I don't know. Hopefully he got away from here. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed anything odd about him? Um, does he do anything illegal? Does he do any drugs? Does he happen to have something in possession like, I don't know, an illegal firearm? Any illegal kind of thing you could think of? And I, I, <clears throat> I hold up my lightsaber and I say like this. Oh, we just assumed that was yours. Right, but, I mean, this is illegal to some people, but not to others. Not to the New Republic. They shrug. If you so are no, Jedi, he just, then you have So, one. yeah, I put I put it put it away. I'm not, like, trying to threaten anyone. But, uh, and I say, um, then no, he does not have anything but legal that I know of. But not all Jedi equipment is legal. I haven't seen anything that I should fear from, from his possessions. Roll, um... Mm, that is a clever bit of wording. Yes, sir. <laughs> I see what you did there. He goes, I can see we're getting nowhere with this. Send it in. And all of a sudden, one of the doors open up. And you see these two guys walk in. And then you hear this weird <laughs> noise as this black globe with a white flashing light flies through the door. And it's really polished. And it's got all these injection needles on the top of it. And a little spinning satellite dish on the top. And uh, the door just kind of goes, Psh! and he says, please, I don't want to have to force it out of you. And I'll, I'll stand when they they kind of made it a threatening situation. I'll stand. Uh, you go to stand and ready you realize, not completely. you go to stand and you yeah, realize uh, he reaches over and presses a button and the lightsaber that you're holding goes Flunk! and attaches to the table and you hear wom, 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 wom. And I say, Ask a specific question and I'll tell you the answer. I'm not lying. I'm trying to hide. <sighs> does from Dan you. Jam have the holocron or does he not? Yes, he has a holocron. 
Excellent. Why has he not given it back to us, I wonder? Is has it he yours? activated it? I don't know. Uh, I think we're going to have to find out from you whether or not that's true. I say, look, it, it reacted to some an argument that we had, but I don't know of him. I have, I'm telling you, I don't know. He, I don't think he has. I haven't seen him activate it. He, to the best of my knowledge, he didn't know how. Well, we've already brought our toy out. Might as well put it to use, right? I'm going to try to negotiate it with my skill and be like, look, dude, I'm, I'm totally being upfront and honest with yeah, you. Like, ahead. there's no need to torture. Hard I thought we were homies here. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's three, three right? Couple. Yep. Okay. Oh, man. This guy's trying to put the torture on my... I don't want to fight <laughs> these fools with no weapons. Okay, negotiation. Here we go. You guys know which droid I'm talking about, right? There you go. Yeah. Dude, get off me, torture bot. Get off me, torture bot. It's, a, it's the uh, truth serum interrogation yeah. droid that got yeah. uh, Leia to spill the location of her rebel friends. Yep. So, uh, basically, he goes, all right, I believe you. Waves his hand in the phrase and leaves. And he says, it's just that that holocron... <laughs> Is disappointed? I mean, the droid looks disappointed, yeah, it's like, right? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he demagnetizes the table, hands you back the lightsaber, and he says, we have to be sure. Information is our business. And I'll say yes, of course. Um, is the, do, you, do you think that the, the Holocron is of Sith origin? Is it dangerous? It didn't yes. seem to be of Sith origin. Saw it. it is. I, oh, okay. Well, I don't know enough People about it very well. I should... It. People who are around it find themselves weakened, and they, well, we've had a Jedi say it, makes them feel like they can give in easier to the dark side. I could see and that being true. kind of have this flashback of you in the conference room, knowing now that uh -huh. Damn Jam has had it near him at all times, how easy it was for you to succumb. Yeah, and plus he was really oh, fearful of that whole encounter. Like he was so, too afraid of me. Like he he shouldn't have been that afraid of me personally, but he was. He was very afraid. So that... seems like something may have magnetized it. Yes, I'll say I'll say I will do all that I can to free him or take it from him um, and safeguard it. Please know that know that is true. Listen, you're a Jedi. This is important to you. It's a very special holocron used back in the days of the old Republic. They can track Jedi locations with it. Anyone who knows what they're doing. Mm, that's extremely dangerous. Commander Luke found out about it. Oh. He kind of like holds himself. Jedi Master Skywalker found out about it. And him and the Alliance have been talking with Corsac for quite some time. They would like to have it in their possession. Unfortunately, it was stolen. And it could end up in anybody's hands. And if remnant, if the Imperial Remnant find that, then... Well, I do happen to know that Damn Jam values it highly. I'm sure that if... So I, so he will keep it safe. And we will be able to get it from him. Perhaps if we just monetarily reimburse him, he will, he will give it up. I'm sure that's not too great of a concern for your organization. I look around at well, the 300... Or look around at the huge army camp they have here. Yeah, he, he opens the door. He's kind of talking with you as he's walking. He says, well, the thing is, we've had one of our agents speak with you already. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to detect anything. Oh, Valeria. And I, I seem a little bit down because I... I don't know for sure that she's dead, but that seems to be what... People's... Hey, you, haven't, you haven't heard that she's alive. Well, I mean, last I know, she was on the ship that exploded, and no one has said that she made it out. Well, last you knew, you you were already on the shuttle. You had no idea that she was on the ship that exploded. Well, you mean about last where I left her? Well, wait, when you wait, last wait, wait. left her, you assumed that everybody died on the star's end. You did not see the escape pod come out. Oh, right, wait. but I know that Damn Jam and Vitar made it out. So, At least I know for sure Damn Jam did, because right. I saw him physically. And And... Last game, I gave Damn Jam gave Broad the bra that Valeria had. Right, but you didn't but say, you didn't yeah, say by that the way, she was she's dead. dead. Yeah, that's so, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I'm, I'm just saying, I, <laughs> yeah, because I just feel because no one mentioned okay. her, so I kind of yeah. that's what I'm saying. I didn't say for sure, but I have this feeling that she's probably that they're probably talking about her. She's probably dead. That's probably so, her. Broad's thinking he's getting some if he can just get off this planet. Nobody yeah. stole him. 
Yes, Valeria. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't find the remains of the Star's End. Like, I think... Well, I, I was in the fucking cargo hold. I don't know exactly what happened. Right, but you know enough about starship crashes to say that not finding yeah, the remains the, is kind of weird. The odds of... Oh, well, it was... It was a Ooh. large explosion. Um, it was a large explosion, but there should still be some debris. Something. Hopefully she got... An back. IFF transponder, but... <laughs> There's just a giant crater in the planet, and the only thing that we found was the escape pod distress beacon that we traced to you, folks. And he continues walking. Well, I know that my my mechanic had done experimental modifications to the ship. It's per, it's possible that the explosion occurred, but the ship survived and is on a different location. And then all of a sudden, this guy runs up, and he's like, Sir, it's Bardarak. He's demanding to know where Kyle is, and, and we don't know where he is. Kyle's in the cantina. Uh, sir, you might want to get him. So the okay, camera let's wipes, go to the cantina. <laughs> the camera wipes to Kyle here, the captain, and a few of the guards approaching the opening of this canyon where there is a small armored vehicle and the doors have been punched in and this Wookiee is pacing. The three of you, did you follow Bardrock right up to the gates? Because that's exactly what he did. Or did you stay <laughs> hidden? Oh. Balls, oh. man. <laughs> no. um, did you guys go with the wiki? Or did you... As as Baderak went running, he's trying to sense where here's at at this point. Yeah, I mean, I would Grout would probably like turn to Dam Jam and be like, "Lead the way. You you know where here is." Yeah, and as you guys are kind of uh, moving forward, because Damn Jam, you do get a feeling. You see here, he's standing on the other side of Bardarok, looking at the scene before him, like, what is going on? He's dressed in a mining outfit, the one that you handed him, and standing next to him is Kyle, and he's like, Buddy, what's going on here? And then Bardarok's talking about how, uh, you know, <coughs> that Viator said that Kyle was in danger, and the two of them are like, what? Kyle's like, I wasn't in danger. What are you talking about? And that's when Bardarak grits his fists and turns around and gives this enraged gaze to Viatar. Meanwhile... And, 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 and would Damn Jam see this? Damn Jam, you see all these corset guys. And they see okay. you. And immediately guns go up. And... Damn Jam will just look around and... Do you drop your disruptor rifle that you're carrying? Well, yeah. <laughs> At this point. They see you throw realizing. down one of their rifles and, and you hold up your hands. Grod, you see him raise his hands and surrender. And I'll just uh, kind of... They're all pointed at Damn Jam, though, right? Yep. I would be like, I'm gonna kind of step in front of him and be like, "Oh, hey guys, what's what's the big deal? Are we all on same team here?" I'm gonna do the same thing to the officer. Yeah, I think at this point he orders them to lower their guns, and then they lower their weapons, and they're like looking at Damn Jam cautiously, and everybody's being cautious, and then all of a sudden, Except oh, go ahead, Vitar. Yeah, Vitar's not cautious. Yeah, Vitar's yeah, like. <laughs> Checking the sky. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then, Viator, you're checking the sky and you see the dreadnought right above you, and you see one of its turbo lasers ignite red and it starts to focus a beam. It was like, it's one of those things where it, the, the faulty circuitry and his, his voice modulator, like, pump amplified, and he's like, Turbo laser! So he screams, he screams, turbo laser like a PA, like <laughs> as loud as an air horn. One of those NBA ones that are like, dah, 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 dah. this is, he's just loud. He's like, turbo laser, and everybody inside the camo gets down. But the Dreadnought really can't see them because they're within this camo. But what they do see is uh, the three of you the outside truck. and this Wookiee the truck. Um, standing by this armored truck. And they fire. And that's where we're going to go to break to end part three and prepare for part four.
Thank you very much. Please like this video, comment below, support the players, and we'll be right back with the final part of this episode. Thank you.